We needed them to make the music, the music that moved our feet, that stirred our passions, that warmed our souls. There were eight clubs on one side of the street and eight clubs on the other side and had the greatest players, Dizzy Gillespie and one, Charlie Park and another, uh, 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 Oscar Pettit and one, or Coleman Hawkins, Leslie Young, every club had a, and, and, and all the young jazz players would stand on the street. So by the time you, you end up at, at the end of the street, you've, you've, you've jammed at a rock club, a jazz club, a strip joint. But they're cut from a different cloth. They're from an older way of life, an older world a world that seemed to consist of more respect. There was a, uh, a chain of restaurants in Detroit called Checker Barbecue, and they would have after-hour jams. I go listen to all these great heavyweights, and I learned from Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and, and Bud Powell, and whoever played there. Cats always at your house playing. We're always rehearsing. And now, many of them desperately need us. There was nothing that I thought I couldn't do. I went from a uh, spoiled, um, coddled, never had to work wife, corporate wife, to starving jazz musician <laughs> overnight. People stopped calling me. You know, people stopped calling me for gigs because they didn't know what they were going to get. I actually was homeless for a while in Toronto. <laughs> I found a building and I started sleeping in the back of the building, and I, I did that for about three years. It's not a stable job that has a retirement at the end of it often, and uh, a lot of guys fall through the cracks. They said they were paying $10 for somebody to come in and clean the restaurant. And I said, well, I'll do it. You know, I, I was tired of standing in front of McDonald's. I was tired of asking for quarters. Hank Mobley, one of the saxophone players that played with a uh, Miles Davis and the Jazz Messengers in, in the 50s and 60s, and he died at 56, homeless. You know, through the drug use and so forth, I had lost all my teeth. It's a rough business, and it's a rough life, it really is. And anybody can fall on hard times, anybody. They gave us their art, and now there's a place where you can give back. The nonprofit California Jazz Foundation aids California jazz musicians in crisis by providing access to quality social and economic services for eligible applicants through caring, knowledgeable professionals. Since 2006, we've worked to help these talented artists who have given us so much pleasure over the years, often with so little reward. These musicians only think about how they're existing when they're working. They don't, they don't internalize that maybe someday they won't be able to work. These are pretty trying times for, economically for, for most artists, you know, especially musicians, and uh, there are quite a few of us who cannot afford health insurance. I think of the many, many musicians uh, we know that are on their own and don't have family living or living here and uh, are going through bad times. Most jazz musicians I've got, including myself, uh, never really thought about health care or insurance or any of those things. They're never thinking about music. It's very, very tough, I think, because it's not the popular music anymore. And it's, it's hard to find clubs. It's just hard to make a living. A lot of them didn't take good care of themselves, didn't have great resources to you know, rely on. And uh, I, can't, I can tell you, and a lot of them had, had other problems, whether it be substance abuse or mental problems. I know many guys that have worked really with wonderful musicians and, and played with the greatest bands and all that stuff, but they didn't get any, any benefits or they didn't get, you know, they didn't build up their, or they didn't save their money or whatever. I know uh, of several musicians who did need help or people that you thought uh, did have it all put together and then when they passed away their their spouses didn't have anything so they didn't really have it together as much as we all thought they did. I think when we see jazz musicians we, we say these are happy-go-lucky guys they are doing okay uh, obviously having a good time and all that sort of thing but most of them have not prepared for later life. In under 10 years the California Jazz Foundation has touched hundreds of jazz musicians providing rent, mortgage, and utility payments, housing relocation, arranging for medical and dental care, in-home nursing, 
transportation to physical therapy, discount prescriptions, MRIs, hearing exams, and instrument replacement. Since being able to access help from the California Jazz Foundation, I've been able to actually visit the dentist and get some much needed dental work done. Uh, I've been able to catch up with my landlady, which has really been helpful. They allowed me to move into a loft downtown in Los Angeles, and I have the front part. I live in the back, and in the front part, I have a rehearsal studio. The California Jazz Foundation was there to help me and my family get through a couple of months of where I couldn't work while I was healing from my surgery. Our economy poses ever-increasing challenges. Many older musicians have no social security or insurance. Some see no residuals at all from their important works. As a charitable nonprofit organization, we rely on you. Your membership allows us to continue helping our jazz musicians in time of need. The California Jazz Foundation has been a godsend for me. Uh, wow, it's uh, been a lifeline, a godsend. Uh, and I'm so grateful for it. See, I'm getting emotional, but it's, it's been wonderful knowing that there are people out there like Edie and uh, other members of this foundation that are supporting people like myself. Join us today in helping those artists who have given us so much. Courage, dignity, healing. Join the California Jazz Foundation in giving back to those who have given us so much.